The film opens with a van pulling up at a parking lot of a big box store called U-Mart. Larry Crown, a middle-aged man, gets out of his van in an upbeat mood. A montage shows Larry committed to his job, and he is seen genuinely enjoying helping out his customers and forming bonds with them. The montage ends as an announcement is made for Larry, and he is called to the common break area. His co-worker excitedly assumes Larry is going to be awarded the Employee of the Month for the ninth time. Larry, full of optimism, goes to the meeting, only to be given the shock of his life. Despite his commitment to the blue-collar job, and his ample experience, he has been fired. They chalk it up to his lack of education, which has proven to be a hindrance during the corporate restructuring. Larry returns to his home, where he resides alone. After wallowing in despair for a bit, he picks himself up and immediately starts searching for a new job. He makes a few phone calls, seeking sales or managerial positions. However, all of them seem to be already filled. Later, he makes personal visits to the stores, but is again met with no success. Dejected, and as a last resort, Larry visits his bank for help with refinancing his debt of $372,000 with which he bought back his house after the divorce. The banking executive claims it won't be possible since he's unemployed. Even his house isn't worth that money. In her typical sweet-talking, tactful manner, she gives him a reality check by giving him an option of liquidating his assets. Unwilling to let go of his house, he decides to set up a yard sale. His neighbor, Lamar, puts an end to it before he can begin, claiming his monopoly over the location. But when Larry tells him he lost his job, he softens up. In his jovial manner, Lamar gives him advice about his situation and urges him not to be in denial. He must accept that they wanted him out of the job and used his lack of education as an excuse. He equates it to him, an African-American man, having faced this kind of discrimination for years. He suggests that he could file for unemployment and get the benefits. Unfortunately, it won't be enough to pay off his debt. Larry comes to a pivotal moment in his life when Lamar brings him back to his house, where his wife is holding a garage sale. He hands him a brochure manual for East Valley Community College and advises him to get educated. His wife thinks there's no age limit for learning, and Larry should listen to her husband. Considering he's financially sound and doesn't work for anyone anymore, Larry makes a joke about it, and in a quick flashback, we see the real reason. A few years ago, Lamar won $500,000 on a TV game show. And yet in the present situation, he still tries to haggle money for the college manual from Larry in case he intends to buy it. Larry scoffs and walks away without it. Anxious but full of purpose, Larry visits East Valley College. He meets Dave Busick, the Dean of Student Services. The Dean assumes he's coming back to college to finish his education, but he is corrected when Larry informs him it's his first time ever attending college. He was in the Navy for 20 years as a cook. The Dean takes that as a hint to recommend a hospitality course, but Larry isn't interested. The Dean finally recommends Speech 217. He believes this course will change his life, and slyly remarks that he will especially like the teacher. He circles out a combination of three courses, speech, economics, and composition. He can learn how to talk articulately, learn how to do business, and even write about it. Larry quickly enrolls himself and gets his college ID. While returning, he stops at a gas station. Two men pull up on their scooters. They rapidly fill gas and leave, while he's still waiting for his SUV to drink up 20 times the amount of petrol. Larry heads back to Lamar's garage sale and wants to buy a scooter. Lamar asks $800 for it, but Larry can't afford more than $200. After a ridiculous bout of bargaining, where Lamar won't budge below $625, Larry gets another idea. He offers to trade his flat screen TV for it. Lamar agrees and shows him how to ride the scooter. Right after turning it on, Larry crashes the scooter, but gets back up unscathed. Next morning, we see a black sedan pulling up on the street. A beautiful but clearly hungover woman trudges out of her car, heels first. She's wearing her sunglasses and sips her coffee as she gets to her cabin in college. Mercedes Tainot, the English teacher, has a despondent conversation with her colleague and English teacher, Francis, about them being the only ones who are expected to teach at 8 in the morning. Mercedes doubts her worth and wonders whether she has any impact on her students. Meanwhile, Larry is on his way to college on his scooter. It seems he has got the hang of riding it by now. He parks his scooter and meets a fellow scooter riding student, Talia. Talia gives him tips on how he could ditch his glasses and not tuck in his polo t-shirt to fit in at college. Ms. Mercedes Tainout walks into her class, speech 217 and counts the number of students. She's relieved that she doesn't have to teach this early in the morning, since it's just 9 students. The minimum number required for her to conduct her class is 10. She gleefully announces that she's canceling the class, until Larry walks in and thwarts her plans. Begrudgingly, she asks Larry to find a seat and introduces herself to the class. She gives them the correct pronunciation of her surname as she moves towards the board. She writes the word care on it, and informs the class that this is all she expects from them. If they won't care to put in the effort, they should get out of her class right now. The students are taken aback by her sudden outburst, 
but don't move from their seats. To which she remarks that it was worth a try, and calmly continues asking them to introduce themselves in the next class and give a speech about something they already know how to do. A student, Steve, raises his hand and pronounces her surname incorrectly, which ticks her off. He says it's impossible for him to prepare this speech in two weeks. She mockingly questions why he chose to be in this class in the first place. He casually recalls that it was the Dean of Student Services who encouraged him to enroll. This conversation is interrupted as his cell phone rings. He ignores his teacher and answers the call. This is when Ms. Tainot reaches her saturation point and firmly reprimands him. She makes him put the phone down and strongly urges him to start learning to care. Later, Larry heads to the economics class, where he has a conversation with a middle-aged woman called Lala, who was with him in the previous class. Lala is scared of Ms. Tainot. Talia also happens to be in this class. Talia has an affable personality and has a knack of getting comfortable with people. After their icebreaker at the parking lot, she gives Larry a nickname Lance Corona. Meanwhile, Ms. Tainot goes to her next class, where only four students have shown up. She cancels the class and walks out in disappointment. Later that afternoon, she enters her home while her husband is looking at pornographic images. He quickly starts pretending he was in the middle of work, and comments that she's back home early. He offers that they should celebrate her first day of term, but instead of acknowledging him, she heads to the kitchen and fixes a cocktail for herself. He shares how he spent his day writing and working out. However, she calls him out on his lie and accuses him of looking at porn instead. He admits to it, but justifies his behavior. He feels everyone has a secret life in every marriage, but Mercedes disagrees. She keeps no secrets from him. Ironically, she gets a brain freeze from her drink, but their conversation becomes more heated as he looks down upon her career, and builds up his own professional career. Sadly, Mercedes shuts down and walks away from the conversation, as he doubles down on the fact that he's just being a guy and there's nothing wrong with his actions. Later, we cut to the next speech class. A student is midway through her impassioned but unintentionally boring speech on ladies' lacrosse. Mercedes seems slightly amused by it, while the dean sneaks into class and sits down on an empty chair. Following this, Mercedes announces that Larry is up next. Larry nervously introduces his topic how to prepare restaurant-quality French toast. He begins with a mundane monologue on the ingredients, but Mercedes cuts him off abruptly and asks him to sit back down. Steve gets inspired to give his speech, and unsurprisingly, starts talking about toaster waffles. He takes the easy way out by saying the bare minimum. Following the same lead, the next student comes forth and begins to give a speech about dance steps, as Mercedes reaches the point of being utterly unbothered with the whole thing. The economics teacher, Dr. Ed Matsutani, on the other hand, is extremely dedicated to the subject he's teaching. Larry, like the rest of the students, seem to be paying their highest attention. Until Larry gets distracted by Talia's text messages. She's asking him to bunk class with her, but he tries not to engage. However, after exchanging a few texts, he gets caught by Dr. Ed, who confiscates his cell phone. He exclaims that while they are called smartphones, only dummies use them in his class. Talia meets her boyfriend after class and introduces Larry to them. Del Gordo belongs to a scooter gang, and Talia wants Larry to join them all. They give him a trial run, after which they head to a diner and ultimately land at Lamar's yard sale. It takes Lamar no time to start haggling with Del, and he manages to make a sale. Talia buys a few clothes from Lamar's wife as well. As Larry is studying in his room, Talia enters with her friend. She wants Larry to get a haircut from her, a professional barber, who agrees to give him a free first cut. While Larry gets a makeover, the scooter buddies clear out the clutter from his home. They finally indict him into the scooter gang with a make-believe ritual. Later, Del has a conversation with Larry and asks him to not fall in love with his girlfriend, as most men usually tend to. Larry is confused, as ever. It's evident that he's never thought about her that way, but gives him a firm handshake as a gesture of solidarity. Meanwhile, the makeover of the house is over. Larry is actually quite impressed with what they've done with his place. The following day, Larry is on his way to college as he spots Mercedes driving in her car. He makes her stop and animatedly reminds her that he is Larry from speech class. She obviously knows who he is, but isn't particularly interested in having a conversation conversation. He asks her why she's got the music turned up so high. She responds that it's merely to drown out the annoying sound of the involuntary GPS instructions. Larry steps in, literally through the window, and fixes the GPS for her. She thanks him for it, and finally her bitter and guarded surface begins to crumble. In class, she starts to take more interest. After his earlier setback in economics class, Larry impresses Dr. Ed Matsutani by giving the correct answer to the question he poses to the class. Although this sense of achievement is short-lived, as he is caught yet again texting Talia on his cell phone. After college, he heads out with Talia. She gives him a choice to pick out any of the clothes from the wardrobe of her makeshift thrift store, as a continuation of his makeover. While he's changing and half-naked, Dell turns up at the wrong time. He completely misreads the situation and isn't too happy about it. Things seem to be looking up for Larry as his friend Frank, who runs the diner, offers him a job in case he needs it. 
His background as a Navy cook has come to use. Frank asks him to work it out with Raoul, the head chef, who thinks otherwise. He believes Larry may not be up to the task, given the number of years it's been since he was in the kitchen professionally. Larry makes a few breakfast meals, and Raoul is impressed enough to offer him the job. But Larry needs to head to college right after. Raoul doesn't care what he does, as long as he is on time and does not steal the flatware. He prides himself on being a good boss, and Larry strokes his ego as he leaves. Mercedes notices Larry is not in class. Larry misses the speech class, but makes it in time for economics class. Mercedes spots him later in college and confronts him for missing her class. As punishment, she gives him pop topics to speak on in the next class. Talia notices that there's more to Mercedes' outburst. Later, Mercedes is in her car in the parking lot as it is pouring outside. She notices Larry and Talia grabbing food, and quickly getting back to their car to avoid the rain. Mercedes misunderstands the scene and judges Larry as the type who came to college only to find a younger girl who has a thing for older men. Next morning, Larry gives his speech on interior design. He begins by saying he knows nothing about it, but his friend does. Without mentioning Talia's name, he praises her penchant for aesthetics. The students enjoy his speech, but Mercedes shows a hint of jealousy when she interrupts him. Mockingly, she asks the rest of the class if they remembered anything from his drab speech. They actually add their opinions on it, which wasn't something Mercedes was expecting. She doesn't acknowledge Larry and asks the next student to speak. Later that evening, Talia spots a property listed for rent. She meets Larry for advice during his shift at the diner. Larry calculates that this property will be profitable for her thrift store due to low rent, overheads and labor. Dell shows up at the exact moment she joyfully declares that she loves Larry. Larry doesn't want to ruffle any feathers, and takes that as his cue to get back to work. Mercedes and her husband are out for a date night, which seems to be going horribly wrong. They are nagging at each other as they drive back drunk. Mercedes is frustrated that she works all the time, but he gets to surf porn and only pretend to work. However, he crosses a line when he comments on her body in a derogatory manner. Mercedes urges him to stop the car, but he continues to pass it off as a joke. She finally loses her cool and forces him to stop the car. She gets out of the car and calls him a childish loser. He drives off angrily. Later, she's all alone at the bus stop when Larry, Talia, and the scooter gang are passing through. Talia notices Mercedes in the distance and nudges Larry to help her out. Larry pulls up to her and offers a ride. She politely declines. The rest of the gang leaves Larry and Mercedes alone. He offers her a ride again, and after a little push and pull, she finally agrees. On their way home, they pass by Mercedes' husband's car, who is being arrested by the cops for drunk driving. Mercedes has a hearty laugh at this poetic justice of the situation. When they reach her house, Larry chivalrously makes sure that she enters her house safely. In her drunken stupor, she clumsily finds the key and they enter. She makes a move on Larry, and tests the waters by asking him to kiss her. Larry looks at her for a brief moment. There is a mutual attraction between them, and they share a passionate kiss. However, Mercedes is extremely drunk, and he doesn't want to take advantage of the situation. He pulls back and leaves her house. She's disappointed, but then she looks through the peephole and catches him celebrating triumphantly outside. Next morning, Mercedes' husband comes back home while Mercedes is hungover at college, trying her best to teach. After the class is over, she summons Larry to speak in private. She stoically apologizes for her behavior, due to her being emotional and under the influence the previous night. She discusses that the teacher-student dynamic will be a piece of gossip, embarrassment and scrutiny at the college, and they should do the right thing and not take this further. She certainly doesn't want him to brag to his fellow classmates about scoring with the teacher. This presses the wrong nerve, and Larry leaves, upset. Later, Larry visits his bank. He brings a folder of documents to the banking executive. He has applied his knowledge from the economics class to transfer his bad debt back to the bank. The executive looks disheveled as she tries to talk him out of the strategic foreclosure. However, he doesn't fall for it and holds his ground. Ultimately, he hands the papers and his house keys to her. After this, he meets Lamar and woefully discusses the loss of his house. He grieves the future he imagined in it, but Lamar makes him see the logical side of it. That night, Mercedes is at home drinking coffee instead of her usual alcoholic drink. She seems to be in an introspective mood as she watches the rain. Next morning, she hands out a box to each student and requests them to pick out a topic for their next speech. Larry picks out Geography Show, which is actually George Bernard Shaw, an error he made due to the loopy handwriting. This banter between them is the crack in the wall they've built up between each other, and Mercedes asks him to speak on geography instead. Later, Talia comes to the teacher's chambers. She tells Frances, her English teacher, that she's quitting college. Mercedes overhears the conversation and makes a jealous remark at her with regards to Larry. However, Talia clears up her confusion. The fact that there's nothing romantic between them makes Mercedes smile to herself. Talia is missing during the economics class. Larry comes to Talia's workspace and asks her to explain her absence at college. This is when Talia reveals that she has dropped out of college. He tries to convince her to stay, but Talia, in her rebellious manner, tells him not to act like a dad. 
She shows him her new lower back tattoo, which is inscribed in Japanese. Yet again, Del misreads the situation and knocks on the glass door. He shouts that he can see what they are up to, which makes Larry and her laugh. As he leaves, he informs her that the tattoo is in Chinese and means soy sauce. After his shift at the diner, he comes back to his home. The sign outside says, foreclosure. The following morning, he packs all his boxes and takes one last look at his house. He orders pizza delivery for his neighbors. The delivery guy happens to be the executive who fired him a few months ago, at Umart. He's surprised at the fateful turn of events. After the meal, he bids a tearful goodbye to the neighbors. That night, Frances comes over to Mercedes' house to give her support after her divorce is finalized. They happen to order pizza delivery as well. The next morning are the final exams. Mercedes and Larry talk as they enter college together. She appreciates that he kept their secret and didn't gossip about it when he easily could have. He believes he can't do many things, but he can keep a secret. She responds positively and says this is what gentlemen do. As they students take turns to give their speeches, they all seem to have improved drastically. Larry begins his speech on the topic geography show, and his opening joke makes Mercedes laugh. He shares his life story while he was in the Navy. He went around the world five times and saw numerous countries, monuments and sites. He names all the other students' topics and reflects that he has seen all of them. All the students applaud at the end of his speech. He gets an A-plus for it. Even his economics final goes well, and Dr. Ed Matsutani appreciates him. A while later, Mercedes shows up at Larry's diner with Francis. She appreciates him for getting an A-plus out of her, she usually doesn't hand them out. When she tells him he's an excellent student, he reciprocates the compliment and remarks that she's an excellent teacher. He feels elated as he steps back into the kitchen. The next term begins, and Larry has re-enrolled for the economics class. However, he doesn't turn up for Mercedes' class, even if the other students show up. This term, Mercedes is teaching Shakespeare. Lala wonders why Larry isn't here, since he said Mercedes' class changed his life. Mercedes walks back to her office chamber after class. She sees a note from Larry on the door. It is an invitation to eat French toast with him, with the address to his apartment underneath. She smiles and drives to him. She stops at Talia's new thrift store, called Talia's. His apartment happens to be right next to it. He calls her Mercy as she walks up to his new apartment. She says that Lala mentioned this her class changed his life, to which he responds that it's because of this class that he met her. They kiss and head into his apartment. 